Hey guys, welcome to Medifaction. Today we will learn about the anatomy of palatine tonsil. The palatine tonsils or tonsils are a pair of soft tissue masses located at the rear of the throat or pharynx. Each tonsil is composed of tissues similar to lymph nodes covered by a pink mucosa. Now this is how a palatine tonsil looks like. So to learn more about palatine tonsil, let's start. In this video, I will be enumerating an introduction, features and relations of palatine tonsil, arterial supply, venous drainage, lymphatic drainage, nerve supply, histology, development and also some important clinical anatomy. Introduction the palatine tonsil occupies the tonsillar sinus or fossa between the palatoglossal and palatopharyngeal arches. This is where it is located generally. It can be seen through the mouth itself. Features and relations. The tonsil is almond shaped. It has two surfaces, medial and lateral, two borders anterior and posterior and also two poles upper and lower the medial surface is covered by stratified squamous epithelium continuous with that of the mouth the surface has 12 to 15 crypts the largest of these is called the intratonsillar cleft the lateral surface is covered by a sheet of fascia which forms the hemicapsule of the tonsil, right here. The capsule is an extension of the pharyngeobasilar fascia. Now right here you can appreciate the pharyngeobasilar fascia which continues to form the so called hemicapsule of the tonsil. It is only loosely attached to the muscular wall of the pharynx, formed here by the superior constrictor and by the styloglossus, but anteroinferiorly, the capsule is firmly adherent to the side of the tongue by suspensory ligament of tonsil just in front of the insertion of palatoglossus and the palatopharyngeus muscle. So this is the superior constrictor muscle and on either side we can see the palatoglossus muscle and also palatopharyngeus muscle. The firm attachment keeps the tonsil in place during swallowing. The tonsillar artery enters the tonsil by piercing the superior constrictor which is right here just behind the firm attachment. The palatine vein or external palatine or also known as parallel tonsillar vein descends from the palate in the loose areolar tissue on the lateral surface of the capsule and crosses the tonsil before piercing the wall of the pharynx. The vein may be injured during removal of the tonsil or the process known as tonsillectomy. The palatine vein as I told before right here we can appreciate the palatine vein. So it descends from the palate in the loose area or tissue on the lateral surface of the capsule and crosses the tonsil before piercing the wall of the pharynx. Still more laterally we can appreciate the facial artery right here with its tonsillar and ascending palatine branches. Right here is the ascending palatine branches. The internal carotid artery is 2.5 cm posterior lateral to the tonsil. The anterior border is related to palatoglossal arch with its muscle. 
This is the palatoglossal arch. This is the palatoglossal muscle. This comprises the anterior border. The posterior border is related to the palatopharyngeal arch with its muscle as well. This is the palatopharyngeal arch. This is the palatopharyngeal muscle which comprises the posterior border. <laughs> Talking about the upper border pole, it is related to the soft palate and the lower pole is related to the tongue. The plica triangularis is a triangular vestigial fold of mucous membrane covering the antero inferior part of the tonsil. Now let's observe the diagram. This is the superior constrictor. This is the buccopharyngeal fascia and this is the loose areolar tissue which we were talking on the previous slide. This is as I told this hemicapsule of the tonsil. Tonsillar artery, facial artery. Let's move on. So as I told the plica semilunaris is a similar semilunar fold that may cross the upper part of the tonsillar sinus. The intratonsillar cleft is the largest crypt of the tonsil. This is the intratonsillar cleft which is the largest crypt of the tonsil. It is present in the upper part. It is sometimes wrongly named as supratonsillar fossa. The mouth of the cleft is semilunar in shape and parallel to the dorsum of the tongue. As I told, superiorly we can appreciate the soft palate and this right here. Inferiorly it is related with the dorsum of the tongue. The mouth of the cleft is semilunar in shape and parallel to dorsum of tongue. It represents the internal opening of the second pharyngeal pouch. We will be talking more about this in the development. A peritonsillar abscess often begins in this cleft. We will be talking about the abscess in the clinical anatomy. So just to understand, this is the facial artery. This is the submandibular salivary gland. This is the hemicapsule of the tonsil. This is the suspensory ligament of tonsil, which we mentioned earlier. These are fascias. This is the pharyngeobasilar fascia. This is the buccopharyngeal fascia, superior constrictor, and also the vein, paratonsillar vein. Hope it's clear. Let's continue. Arterial supply of tonsil. The main source for the arterial supply is tonsillar branch or facial artery. This is the facial artery and these are the tonsillar branch of facial artery. There are also some additional sources which are A. Ascending palatine branch of facial artery. This is the ascending palatine branch of facial artery. Also, dorsal lingual branches of the lingual artery. This is the lingual artery which arises from the external carotid artery and this is the dorsal lingual branch. The next additional supply is ascending pharyngeal branch of the external carotid artery. This is the ascending pharyngeal branch of the external carotid artery. Also, the greater palatine branch of the maxillary artery also supplies this. So, this is the maxillary artery and this is the greater palatine branch supplying the palatine tonsil. Venous drainage. One or more veins leave the lower part of deep surface of the tonsil pierce the superior constrictor and join the palatine, pharyngeal or facial veins. Lymphatic drainage 
lymphatics pass to the jugular digastric node right here is the jugular digastric node and for palatine tonsil there are no afferent lymphatics nerve supply the glossopharyngeal and lesser palatine nerves supplies or innervates with the palatine tonsil right here is the glossopharyngeal nerve this right here is the tonsil histology the palatine tonsil is situated at the oropharyngeal isthmus its oral aspect is covered with stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium which dips into the underlying tissue to form the crypts this right here is a crypt the lymphocytes lie on either side of the crypts in the form of nodules the structure of tonsil is not differentiated into cortex and medulla this could be useful as a point of identification also development the tonsil develops from endoderm of ventral part of second pharyngeal pouch some part persists as the intratonsillar cleft the lymphocytes are mesodermal in origin clinical anatomy the tonsils are large in children they retrogress after puberty number 2 the tonsils are frequently sites of infection especially for children infection may spread to surrounding tissue forming a peritonsillar abscess enlarged and infected tonsils often require surgical removal the operation is called tonsillectomy that means tonsils will be removed surgically a knowledge of the relationship of the tonsil is of importance to the surgeon number 4 tonsillectomy is usually done by guillotine method hemorrhage after tonsillectomy is checked by removal of clot from the raw tonsillar bed this is to be compared with the method for checking postpartum hemorrhage from the uterus these are the only two organs in the body where bleeding is checked by removal of clots in other parts of the body clot formation is encouraged number 5 tonsillitis may cause referred pain to the ear because glossopharyngeal nerve supplies both these areas this is an inflamed tonsil this is normal number 6 Suppuration in the peritonsillar area is called quincy. The peritonsillar abscess is drained by making an incision in the most prominent point of the abscess. This is how an abscess looks like. This is rather normal tonsils. Number 7. Tonsils are often sites of a septic focus. such a focus can lead to serious disease like pulmonary tuberculosis meningitis etc and is often the cause of general ill health hope you have understood the video like subscribe and press the bell button for more videos thank you thanks for watching